Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, was she having a medical emergency, a sleep paralysis dream? Was it something paranormal or all of the above? Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. And it is. And yeah, 855-853-4802, our phone number to share. Your real ghost stories with us. We'd love to hear them. If you want to access to our bonus episodes, advanced episodes, get everything ad free, you can check that out on uh, Apple Podcasts right now on our premium channel there or patreon.com slash real ghost stories or ghostpodcast.com. Tony and Todd with you on today's edition of the program. What is going on in your world? Did a uh, podcast of my own this weekend and actually did a spirit box session trying to speak with my parents, which is something I've never done before. And I think my dad may have come through. How so? Um, There were some responses that matched up with uh, some information that only he would know or somebody that knew him would know. Mm -hmm. And I had some K2 meter hits going on during it and and nothing that made sense why that would be going off. At the exact same moments, I was getting some responses. So I have to spend some time listening back to it, but marked probably like four or five instances in, let's say, a 15-minute session where I thought like... That could be something. Now, this the spirit box, you're talking like the radio frequency where it's scanning the, the dial. Is that accurate? Yep. The SB7 is what I was using. Okay. So it's, okay. It's yep. scan, it scans forward or backward or yep. however you set that up to go. So, um, and, and usually, you know, some of those things you can hear things uh, in some of the response or some of the noise that you hear. Sometimes you hear things that aren't really there. So I'm always really cautious about it. But there were a couple of things that only my dad would kind of know that kind of came through at the exact same time that I would get like a K2 meter hit. Mm. And I'm now I'm like, kind of like, I think maybe he was hanging around. Did you do this in your house? I did in my studio. Okay. Uh, you know, we did it on the podcast. Yeah. So n- now we'll have to see what we all find. Yeah. I'm really curious. You'll have to let me know what you, what you discover in that. That's, that's interesting. Are you, I will, I, I've always, you know, people have said, don't do that stuff in your house. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I've never really, I, I don't really do that much, but I've also never really followed it much. Were you concerned at all about doing it in your house, about uh, letting some other folks in other than your parents? I mean, there is a little bit of concern there because obviously I've had situations where I did some investigating in my house and then I wish I hadn't done mm-hmm. that. But for whatever reason, I just, yeah. this was a situation where I set parameters and said mm-hmm. only people who know me can come through mm-hmm. uh, and stuff like that. So hopefully... So far, in the last two or three days since I did that, nothing strange has happened. Very interesting. Well, yeah. Well, you got to let me know what you uh, what you determine on that as you go through yeah. it. That's cool. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Let's go to our first caller. Hi. Hello. My name's Terry. Uh, I thought I would call in and tell the stories, one that's still bothers me today and I was hoping to get your feedback on it Um, about 15 years ago my husband and I lived in our first small house and um, I wouldn't say it was haunted but there were a few little things that happened there but one thing did happen that really terrified me Um, I guess you would call it sleep paralysis of you know from what I've heard and read about but I don't know at any rate um it was one early one morning uh, in the early kind of dawn light, and I, as I was kind of waking up, I felt a, a presence kind of next to me, and not not in a good way. And um, I, as I became aware of it, um, I started to look to the side of the bed where it was to my right, and I um all of a sudden then I I felt this searing pain in my stomach and um it was like 
the only thing I can liken it to was when I was a kid, I was going to put my put a, something in a light socket, and I, my finger accidentally touched the the prong as it went into the socket, and it looked like this bolt of electricity it felt like a ball going up my um, arm, and I quickly let go of it. But that is that's the only thing I can think of to explain what I was feeling. It was like going into my stomach and radiating through my limbs and I was kind of shaking and I thought I was going to die. I mean, I really, I believed that I was going to die. And then I heard this kind of voice, but it was not outside of me. It was more inside of me. And I know it wasn't my own thoughts because I wouldn't have thought of that because I was, I was panicking and thinking I was going to die. But it said, whatever you do, don't look to your right. Because I was trying, you know, I was kind of frozen. I, and my eyes were, I was wanting to open my eyes. It said, whatever you do, don't look to the right. So it was one of those things that, you know, you think somebody tells you not to do something and you can't help yourself. You do it anyway. I knew better. I, I knew not to do that. So I didn't. And then it, it, it kept going on. And this went on for of course, it seemed like an eternity to me, but it, I kept thinking, is this going to stop? And the, I was aware of this. It, it, I knew it had to be this thing, whatever it was, I couldn't see and wouldn't, didn't want to look at, turn to look at, was doing this to me. And it, it was getting worse. And I thought, well, here, I'm going to die. And, you know, my husband was in the room. And I'm thinking, I'm going to die here. And, and, He's never going to know what happened to me. I, I couldn't figure out what was happening, and I was I was so scared. And all of a sudden, the, in this whatever it was, my thought process, or I, it, it seemed like another voice, but again, it wasn't audible. It was within me, said, um, say the Lord's Prayer. So I, I did. I started saying the Lord's Prayer, and it stopped immediately and uh and i felt like it, it was gone that there was nothing there and and the pain stopped and i i was sitting there breathing heavily and just feeling like i was exhausted and still just scared to death i was scared to move i was st- scared to you know and i had to open my eyes and i just looked straight up at the ceiling i didn't want to i didn't want to move a muscle for a little, so I kind of got some idea of what the hell had just happened to me. And in fact, my voice didn't even work. I was wanting to call for my husband, but my voice wouldn't even work. And so I just kind of laid there. I felt like I'd been just like a dish rag. I mean, just no energy, no nothing. But... um then after, I, I think I just fell back asleep later on because I, I didn't want to move from that spot for a while because and I didn't know what else to do. And I, you know, I just, I, for whatever reason, either I was too terrified or I couldn't speak. So I just fell back asleep and slept for a few more hours. And then when I got up, I looked around, there was nothing around, and I went in and talked to my husband. I'm like, you won't believe what happened to me, and I told him about it. He was just, I mean, I, I, he believed me, but, I, you know, what, what do you say? Something like that. But I'm interested in hearing your thoughts about that. If you've had anybody else that has experienced anything like that, I know I kind of looked that up and, Sleep paralysis is the only thing I can come up with, but it just, it was the weirdest experience, and it was terrifying at the time, and I, I've i never forgotten it. So, no, I, nothing has happened. I mean, I never had any episode of a sleep paralysis type thing before that, and I've never had anything like that since. So, if you could shed some light on that, I would appreciate it. Thank you, and I enjoy your show very much. I'm, I'm glad I found it. Thank you. Bye. What do you think? Just a, a regular sleep paralysis experience that would be 
very troubling, you know, but it, it, is it anything beyond that? Because it's such a unique experience when one has that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, you hear all these stories where people feel like they've had some sort of experience and it's kind of uh, written off as sleep paralysis. The thing that I find uh, intriguing is is something that happens to me. Like if, if I have a bad dream and it's really bad, mm -hmm. um, I usually wake up saying the Lord's Prayer like she did mm -hmm. and uh, doing the sign of the cross. And I'm not even Catholic, but yeah. you know how the, they do the the head, the chest and whatever. I, I like that's how I come out of a bad, bad dream. So I wonder if maybe it was just a sleep paralysis thing and and that helped her kind of push through it or something. Yeah, it's kind of like a comfort type thing and like, OK, yeah. there's kind of grounding yourself almost, if you will. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it certainly could be something it, it, I could see it uh, if I were in her shoes and I had that experience. I think I'd still walk away going, you know, was this n something explainable? You know, something right. that is just literally this is just how my body's working right now. I had this experience. It's not truly paranormal, but it was troubling nonetheless and could kind of come across that way. I, just, I don't think you'd really know. I don't think anyone would really know. But nonetheless, it would certainly make you wonder without a doubt. Do you think we'll ever get to the point where we truly understand all this stuff? Um, Even if we do, I, I don't think we're ever going to be to the point where it's like everyone accepts it as yeah. being reality. I say that simply because people don't accept reality on reality's terms as it is right now. That's true. Things, right. things that right. are just flat out factual, you can prove or disprove. People have their own narrative of what they want to believe and they will believe it. And we've seen that. Um, so to get something that's more fantastical or woo woo in there um, even if we did have ways of proving it, I still think you'd have a, a good portion doubting it. Um, and I, that's just how people seem to be, I guess. Yeah, I don't you're know. probably right. It's, um, it'd be a stretch. Uh, it would be, it would take like a, a very big shift, I think in, in, I guess our understanding of things and accepting of things and, and society as a whole. So maybe <laughs> we'll be dead. But maybe, <laughs> maybe at some point, I don't know. It's uh, it's an interesting one. What do you think? I, I there was a there was a post over the weekend about flat or uh, you know flat Earth yeah. believers. If the Earth was flat, wouldn't cats have already knocked off everything from the Earth over the edge? And I, think, and I yeah. thought, boy, that's smart. That uh, that really does play into uh, answering the question. Flat <laughs> yeah, it, right. Earth is not flat because cats would have knocked everything off. I completely yep. agree. Yep. That problem is solved right there. All right. If you like the show, become a supporter. Apple Podcasts. You can do that there on our premium channel, patreon.com slash real ghost stories or ghostpodcast.com. Until next time, for Todd and all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.